Today in the Vintage Spotlight, Hewlett Packard E2373A for your vintage pleasure. Continuity problem? No problem. Well, at least we hope not. Let's see if we can fix it. Hi everybody, welcome back. Today something a little bit different. Uh, we are going to do a multimeter repair on a vintage Hewlett Packard E2373A. This was sent my way from Dave McKay. Thank you, David, so much. Problem with the E2373A, besides its good looks, and hey, that's no problem, is the fact that it is not working in continuity mode. And uh, yeah, David had mentioned uh, some issues he was having with this meter, and he discovered a leaky uh, battery compartment. And once he took a look at it, he thought, oh, wow, this is some serious leakage going on. Battery corrosion, everything on the PCB substrate was really, uh, yeah, not looking so good. So we're going to go take a look at that issue. And let's just see if we can do a quick multimeter repair. Um, bring the continuity back to life on this gorgeous Hewlett Packard. Right now we are in continuity mode. Uh, the battery is actually getting a little bit low, but uh, not to worry, I will change that shortly. Uh, but yeah, we have no continuity at all, nothing. So silence is golden, unless you're talking about continuity. So let's see if we can fix that, shall we? Now in order to do this operation, there's a few tools you're gonna need. Uh, here's what I'm using, starting off with a good standard wire brush, cleaning off uh, loose residue and uh, a nice steel cleaning brush. This is good for scraping the uh, substrate from the PCB. Um, very, very important when you're cleaning, especially anything corrosive or abrasive, you wanna have a good abrasive brush to get into the down and dirty. Um, these are great as well. Actually, this was sent in to me by another viewer, Mike Yamarino. Uh, thanks again, Mike. Uh, these come in uber handy. They're test probe sets. They look like dental tools. Um, but they are so, so good when it comes to cleaning those hard to get spots. And finally, we have our nickel conductive pen. Now, these also come in silver as well, but silver is a lot more expensive than the nickel. And I find really that they do uh, pretty well the same job for a fraction of the price. And as well, you're going to need a multimeter to test how you're doing. Um, any multimeter really will do as long as it's got continuity. Yeah. Okay, just grabbed a few of my vintage multimeters, just wondering which one I should use. <sighs> Whenever you're working on older meters, vintage multimeters, what have you, vintage anything really, you've got to take it with uh, care and caution because a lot of these parts haven't been moved or touched in 30, 40, who knows how many years. So uh, yeah, just take your time when you do it. Don't be in a rush and uh, hopefully everything will go according to plan. Uh, with this HP, you've only got a couple of clips, as you can see, uh, one on either side here. And that is all that is retaining this PCB. No screws, nothing, just those two clips. So we are just gonna unclip them, and I'm just gonna use a screwdriver here. And let's see how we're doing. The input jacks themselves are also clipped in at the top and the bottom, and they come on just like so. Quite a nice board to work on in terms of, uh, you know, accessibility. There we go. Easy breezy. And yeah, away we go. The main problem was under the LCD display. Two clips here and the display just comes down like that. Made in Japan. Once again, you gotta treat these with kids' gloves. Um, yeah, they're really, really delicate. There's our zebra strip as well. And since we've got it apart, I will take some alcohol and clean the entire uh, top of that zebra strip. Just give it a good once over. Here you can actually see the end result of that battery corrosion. Wow. Yeah, oh, that is ugly, isn't it? all over those terminals um yeah deep into the pcb substrate as well look at that fine trace at the top um that has been compromised as well because of that uh, acid corrosion so what we have to do is we have to get in there and clean all that guck out look at those traces all of that um blue corrosion 
is going to be problematic and you really don't want to have any remnants of this because if you don't clean it out properly now you're going to have a really big problem down the okay you saw the damage now i am scraping it with my wire scraper i want to get rid of all that corrosive debris Oh, that's already looking better. All those acid bubbles are disappearing. I'm gonna do this a little bit longer, get it nice and clean, and we'll come back with the step number two. Now that's nice and clean on top. Most of that acridity is gone. Um, no more bubbling, what have you. I'm gonna take some of that 99.9% .9 alcohol and start giving it a clean. Just work it in there with a Q-tip, don't be shy. Um, you really want to make sure you don't miss this step, it's super important. I'm pretty liberal when it comes to applying this stuff. And I'm also going to clean the top of the display here. Once again, I mean, we're talking over 30 years. So it's always good, and look at that, look at that Q-tip already. Just getting rid of all that gunk that piles up just through normal, everyday environs. That we're living in. Wow. All right, gonna keep on cleaning and we'll be back shortly. Now, most of the damage was done underneath the display. So, um, initially, it looked as if not too much damage was done, but by taking a really good look, um, yeah, you could see that the majority of that battery leakage happened right underneath the display, right over here. So we're getting all that gunk off slowly but surely. Look at that, yeah. So I'm gonna keep on working. Put a little bit of pressure, don't be shy, you're not gonna hurt anything. Yeah, wow. A couple of spots left that have a little bit of that acrid residue. And just trying to get that last vestiges off. And then we'll be ready for the next step. Say, ah, Mr. HP. Okay, so I have most of that acridity off of there now. All those acid bubbles are gone and uh, I've exposed the substrate of the PCB. Um, the tracks for the most part seem to be intact. There are a couple of diversions over here at the top, but generally speaking, considering the amount of uh, battery corrosive, corrosive damage, um, I think we did pretty good here. Now I'm also going to be taking that display and we're going to give that a cleaning as well. Very top of that zebra strip. And this can really help an older meter um, in terms of brightness, contrast, what have you. So you just want to give it a good cleaning with a Q-tip and some isopropyl alcohol. And look what we're getting off of that. Yeah. Next up now, I'm going to re-solder just a couple of joints here where I've had to sort of clean it out a little bit. I'm just going to touch it up with some solder and uh, make it a little fresh. Just going to put a little bit of flux.
Alrighty, so I've touched up the board with some uh, fresh solder and uh, looking good so far. Now what I'm going to do is take the uh, nickel um, conductive pen and just gently go over a couple of the traces just to make sure we don't have any broken joints. So we are complete. I've gone ahead and uh, finished off the rest of the uh, tracing with that nickel uh, conductor pen and should be pretty good. We had a lot of broken traces here at the top. Um, we had some more here on the corner. Um, yeah, so I've cleaned, I've uh, scraped away all of that corrosive uh, battery acid and um, I've re-soldered the piezo connections over here. So we're going to put it all back together and uh, hopefully we're going to have some continuity. Soon find out. And the speaker itself, the piezo goes right into that little modular holding cell. Uh, just clips in like so. All right, just going to put it back together and we'll give that continuity a try. All right, here we go. Moment of truth awaits. Do we have our continuity back? Fingers crossed. Yes, we do. Excellent. Wow, that is a thing of beauty. So there we have it in a nutshell. Uh, these old multimeters are amazing, so well put together, and they have years and years and years of good use ahead of them. Hope you enjoyed this vintage multimeter repair. Until the next one, keep on testing. <laughs>